Now, now, let me understand this, Mr. Ford. Hey. You wish to serve as your own counsel and call Mr. Lampson as a witness for the defense? Yeah, I do, Your Honor. Well, I really don't know what to say. Well, how about, uh, he, this is most irregular, but he may take the stand. Oh, thank you. Uh, this is most irregular, but he may take the stand. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Stan. This is ridiculous. You don't even know how to conduct it. I could have got you off from 20 years to life, but this way you're going to wind up in the electric chair. Raise your right hand, please. You solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. Be seated. State your full name, please. Harold Lamps. You married, Harold? You know damn well what I've been doing. Yes, yes, I am. How many years have you been married? Well, let's see. Uh, Hal Jr. is 10, and uh, we were living on West 11th Street at the time, so that would make it, uh, uh, in the neighborhood of, uh... 11 uh, years, uh, you idiot! <laughs> uh, 11 glorious, wonderful years. <laughs> yeah, that's right. 11 glorious, wonderful years. Look, you're doing this all wrong. <laughs> you are two lovely children. Right? Yes. House in Scarsdale, a late model station wagon, a Great Dane, right? Yes, that's right. Therefore, Your Honor, I submit that the witness is eminently qualified. Now, Harold, I'm going to ask you a question. I want you to think it over very carefully and then answer me as honestly as you possibly can, okay? Well. Do you believe in marriage? What? Do you believe in marriage as an institution? Do you believe in it? Hmm? Well. Hell, yes, sure, of course I believe in it. I mean, what, what kind of a question is that anyway, Stan? From where I said, Harold, which, as you pointed out, is quite likely to be an electric chair, is rather a central one, I'd say. However, let me put it to you a slightly different way. Let us assume for a moment that this dot I have just drawn is a button. A button? Mm-hmm. A button. All right, it's a button. Let's further assume that if you were to push that button, your wife, Edna, to whom you have been married for 11 wonderful and glorious years, would suddenly and magically disappear. Disappear? Yeah, as in vanish. Not be here. No longer exist. I object. Overruled. <laughs> That's right, overruled. And will you please shut up? This is beginning to get interesting. Oh. Thank you, Your Honor. Let me add two important things, Harold. Her disappearance would be absolutely and completely harmless, but what's more important, no one, repeat, no one would ever know that it was you who pushed that button. No one would ever know? No one would ever know. No one would ever know? No one would ever know. How old are you? 52. Oh, I don't believe it. You don't look a day over 40. Well, you no, wouldn't I... look a day over 40 if you lost a little weight, sat up straight. Well, huh? well, there you are. Here you are in the prime of life. A handsome figure of a man, successful in business, adored by one and all. In fact, it could be said that you had it made except for the one thing. I'm a lousy lawyer, huh? <laughs> no. <laughs> You're married. Yeah, but being married is the normal way to live. Isn't it? Who says so? Edna? Oh, Harold, I think you've been brainwashed. You're missing a very important point. Marriage is not a basic fact of nature, it's an invention. It's like the infield fly rule. It exists only because the women say so, and like idiots, we just go following right along. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, no, Stan, I... No, I don't know what I would do without Edna. She, uh... She... Well... She, she plans the meals, sends my shirts to the laundry. Harold, uh, you're making another basic common masculine mistake. You're confusing love and laundry. Love and laundry. Let me tell you something. For years now, a very nice gentleman who operates, for reasons I shall never understand, under the name of Madame Renee, has been picking up my shirts every Monday and bringing them back beautifully done every Thursday. 
And not once, not once in all those years have I felt the slightest urge to marry him. <laughs> yeah, well, you... How much money do you make? Hmm? Between 70 and 80,000 a year. How much of that 70 or 80,000 do you get to spend on yourself? Well, on mm -hmm. that, you know, of course, with Edna and the kids and the payments on the house in Scarsdale. And then, of course, I do carry a lot of life insurance. Yeah, I understand. Now, Harold, stop for one moment and think what life could be like right now. If, if gentlemen of the jury, this concerns you too. Stop and think what your life could be like right now if you'd had the common sense not to marry Josephine or Hilda or Mary or Peggy or Rochelle. Edna. Edna. Just think what you could be doing with all that money right now. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> you have a little Chris Craft, maybe. Get rid of that broken down money pit of a house in Scarsdale. It's all oh, oh, man. easy, Harold. All you got to do is poke the button. Could I grow a mustache? Of course. Put wax on the ends? Well, who could stop you? I used to wear one before I was married. I remember. You cut quite a dashing figure. <laughs> you really think so, huh? Oh, I saw. <laughs> Push the button. Uh, well, that was always a little sparse on the left side there. Oh, good barber could trim that so you'd never even notice it once you push the button. Uh, I never could afford a really good barber then. That yeah, but you could would... now. Uh, yeah, oh, but I could now, it's yeah. It's the last yeah. time you started thinking about girls. Hmm? Uh, girls? Think of a whole world full of girls. Just think on that. A world pulsating with girls. Models? Mm-hmm. Actresses? You know it. My insurance man's new secretary. Yeah. <gasps> oh! Small girls, thin girls, small girls, round girls. Pin-up girls. Well, they don't pin up anymore. They just fold out, but you're getting the idea. And instead of that broken-down money pit of a house in Scarsdale, you get a townhouse all for yourself. With a butler? Push the button. Like Charles? Push the button. To have the martini glasses chilling when I come home? That's right, exactly. Just come with me. That's all you have to do is just push the button. One push, and she just disappears. Nobody will ever know. Just one little push and she's gone. Just push the button. No one will ever know. Harold! If you think I've made your life a living hell in the past, you haven't even begun to learn the meaning of the word supper. Shut up, you old bat! Besides, you won't feel a thing. <laughs> 